The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After hearing his doctrine, many of the followers of Jesus said, This is intolerable language. How could anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his followers were complaining about it and said, Does this upset you? What if you should see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, the flesh that has nothing to offer. The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the outset those who did not believe and who it was that would betray him. He went on, this is why I told you that no one could come to me unless the Father allows him. After this, many of his disciples left him and stopped going with him. Then Jesus said to the twelve, What about you? Do you want to go away too? Simon Peter answered, Lord, who shall we go to? You have the message of eternal life, and we believe, we know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many years ago, on the same reading, or rather the second reading, and I was preaching in this church in Klang, <clears throat> after that, the second reading on the husband and wife, the husband and wife, this couple went back home. The husband turned to his wife and said, you read, you listened just now, no, to the second reading? Obey your husband. Listen to your husband, the wife. The husband said to the wife. He went on and on. The next week, the wife came to see me. And she said, Father, my husband used this text of the, gospel, of the Bible, Ephesians letter, and he bullied me, Father. He bullied me and he said, you must obey me, listen to me. <clears throat> Dear sisters and brothers, don't use this out of context. Huh? Now you don't go back home and fight with each other. There was a fight after reading the word of God. <laughs> there was a misunderstanding between husband and wife. This is not to make you fight. This is to make you understand the implications of what it means <coughs> for husband and wife. Now that is another story. But today's first reading, Joshua calling the elders, calling the judges, calling the scribes, calling the leaders and the people at large. And he called them and he asked them this question, which God do you want to serve? Who do you want to serve? Because the God of the Amorites or the other gods, many, many gods they were worshipping, they were going on their own. And so he called them all together, probably he was giving a homily like this, and telling them, who do you want to serve? You want to serve this, the God that we worship, the true God, or every other God? Just like some people in the church, they come to church, they go to the temple, they have double worship, because a lot of mixed marriages today. So Joshua wanted to attest that, attest that and make sure that there is only one God. And so he asked them, who do you want to serve? And so at the end of the day, in Joshua chapter 24, the last chapter, the people said, we want to serve this God. And Joshua in chapter 24, verse 15 says, in the same chapter, as for me and my household, we want to serve the Lord. We want to serve the Lord. So dear sisters and brothers, is it just the husband? Is it just the wife? Are just only the children? Or only the parents? Only a selected few to serve the Lord? 
or everyone in the whole household is called to serve the Lord. So sometimes we are so indifferent and sometimes we don't even, we come to church but we worship so many other gods. So Joshua is affirming and confirming and making, ensuring that they worship this God and you are here to worship him. <coughs> now, after that, in the gospel today, Jesus, his own, the people, many were following Jesus, weeks and months, they were following Jesus. And following Jesus, as Jesus was sharing, some of them said, this is intolerable language. In the gospel it says, how can we accept it? Just like some of us, we cannot accept the teachings of the church. Especially couples, mixed marriages and all, we have a lot of difficulty to accept the teachings of the church. And many others also. So when we cannot accept, it is so hard to follow. And so they leave the church. Some of them may not like the priest and they leave the church. Some of them may not like certain things that is happening in the church, they leave the church. But Jesus turns to Peter and asks him, and all his other apostles, how about you? Do you want to also leave me? Do you want to also leave me? And Peter responds, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Whom shall we go, Lord? Dear sisters and brothers, we may murmur, we may complain, we may not like certain things, but like Peter, like Joshua, stay with Jesus. Stay with him. Stay with him. Don't leave him. The youth who are here, I see a number of youths today, I congratulate you. I congratulate you because you are here. Those who don't come, we don't curse them, we don't scold them, we don't condemn them. We also pray for them. Because the church world over, the youth are leaving the church. Youth don't come because they feel the church is outdated. The language of the church does not sync with their lingo, with their language. Just like during the time of Jesus, it is no different today. And if you are here today, not just the youth, all of us, stay with him. <coughs> and Peter asks him, Lord, whom shall we go? Chapter 6, verse 68. There was once this man he was, who was in the desert. He was traveling in the desert place and he lost his way. He lost his way. And he lost his way. He had a canister, a, a, a reasonably big one. After for some time in the desert, he had to drink because naturally in the desert there is no place, no oasis where you can get fine water easily. And so he had this canister with him and he was drinking until the last drop of the water was gone. And so he was in the blazing, scorching heat. He was searching what to do. Oh my God, I'm going to die. Staggering himself, pulling himself in that tired body of his. He was looking around and he saw vaguely in a distance, not very far though, a hut. And he said, oh my God, probably I can find some water here. And he went on, struggled himself to that hut. The hut was closed naturally. And so, wondering whether it would be open or locked, he reached out and opened the door. <clears throat> and he opened the door. He saw inside, wow, he saw a water pump. And he was so delighted, oh, maybe there is water here. And so he went in, he pumped that water pump, no water came. No water, oh my God. Broken, he sat there. He said, probably I'm going to die here. 
I think I'm going to die. This is, I'm destined to die in this place. As he was thinking and looking around desperately, he saw in one corner a bottle, a bottle, and he ran with water inside. Wow, he went, ran to the water to take it. It got cocked up, and so he had to uncock the water bottle to drink. And as he took the bottle, there was a label on the water, on the, on the bottle. The, the label read, use this water to start the pump. Use this water to start the pump. And after you have done, refill this bottle. Now, you have a bottle of water. You have a pump there. Probably if you use the water to start the pump, you would have got, you would may get gallons of water. But if I drink this water, finished, and I may not be able to proceed further, but at least it will allow me to live a little longer. He was caught in a dilemma. Dear sisters and brothers, have you been caught in a dilemma like that in your life? Not a dilemma between KFC and McDonald's. Not between Kenny Rogers and Nando's. Not that kind of a dilemma. That dilemma is very easy. You can make a decision very fast. But this dilemma is a matter of life and death. And how? And so, he pondered for a while. Don't know what to do. Then he went up to the bottle, took the bottle, closed his eyes, said a prayer, uncocked the bottle. What do you think he would have done? What do you think he would have done? Sorry? Poured into the pump, rightly so. And he started pumping. He heard a gurgling sound. Water was gushing out. So much of water was coming out. Imagine how delightful he was. How happy he was. He filled his canister. He drank to his heart's content. And he filled the bottle. And he sat down. So relaxed, so relieved. Sitting down there. He looked up. A sigh, relief of a sigh. And then he saw a table there. There on the table, a paper and a pencil. He went up to the paper and pencil. He saw the map showing where he is and where he is to go. Of course, the distance is quite not so near. And that assured him how long he has to cover and how much of water he need. And the canister is sufficient, water is sufficient to take him to his destination. And so, he took the pencil, he went to the bottle that already captioned there, already a label, use this water to start the pump and refill it once you have done. And below that he wrote, believe me, believe me, it works. Believe me, it works. Dear sisters and brothers, what do you believe in? What choices do we make every day matters most? The choices we make every day determines my tomorrow, de determines my day after. The choices which Joshua made, he said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. He made the choice and all the people joined him in making the same choice. And Peter, having made the choice, he said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And when you have made the choice, the Lord is the giver, is the provider of that eternal life to each one of us. Dear sisters and brothers, when you have made the right choice or choices in your life, you inspire others. You inspire others to make similar choices. When you have made the wrong, wrong choices, don't be disheartened. Don't be disheartened.
we all make wrong choices now and then don't be disheartened wrong choices will empower you to learn from your mistakes to be re- to receive realization to come to a greater consciousness that i will not be making these mistakes again and i will bring this empowerment to others so that others too will not make these mistakes that i have done and so dear sisters and brothers let us pray for this grace for the choices that we make determines my tomorrow and let them be right choices that will inspire every other person around me and if i had made the wrong choices never mind let it empower me to move on and to make this correct for others as well and for me the lord is with you believe it works believe he works god bless you amen